All right, as promised, I uh, said I'd make a video on an upcoming maker, company, whatever. This is it. This is the uh, <coughs> Gooseworks folder. Um, I believe this guy started in, well, I know he did. He also makes watches, I guess, like, like a, he's like a boutique, he owns like a boutique watch brand. Um, called Resco in Instruments. I don't know. I, I know a little bit about watches, but I had never heard of Resco Instruments, but um, I'm assuming they're dive watches. Um, but yeah, I guess he wanted to venture out into knives and this is, this is that. Um, he has this version, which, uh, <clears throat> I could be wrong on this, but this is my take on it. So he has this version, which is, this one's a custom, I guess. Um, he also has one that on the clip side, as opposed to saying Gooseworks, it says Resco Instruments or just Resco, I don't know. And in my understanding, the difference between these and the Resco knives. The Resco knives are made in big batches. Um, same handle. The blade shape can be different on these Gooseworks versions. Um, I know this one does look similar to the Resco one, but it is a little bit different. Um, the swedge up here is not as pronounced of a point. And to my understanding, um, <coughs> all of them are hand ground, right? All of those knives. The Resco's and these. But from what he said on Instagram to me very briefly in comments was the Resco ones are all hand ground with a jig. So I guess so that they can all be exactly the same. Whereas these Gooseworks, the blade profile can be different. It's not necessarily this. It, it can be drop point. I've seen a bayonet grind, uh, spear point. Um, whatever different steels as well for the gooseworks but apparently these are hand ground without a jig so the logoing is also different this one has a little goose right there a goose right there gooseworks and then it says re rack straw whatever the hell that is pa washington cascadia I don't know what any of that shit is. <laughs> and then the uh, steel type. This one's a CPM 154. So what he'll do with these customs, <clears throat> whatever the hell you want to call this version, is on his Instagram page, Gooseworks Arena, he will do drops where, hey, I've got this one and this one available, and you just, you know, you say, I'll take it or whatever. There's no ordering. You just grab it, and if you're fast enough, you get it. All right, so, and I got this one. There were two. I picked this one. Um, I do want to try the Resco one as well, and I'm going to try to get a hold of one. But um, this one's nice. It's um, <clears throat> titanium scales. It's kind of got like a, you know, crazy wear. Uh, rough um, stone wash with anodizing, which I like because it hides wear. <laughs> Same deal, polished pocket clip, solid milled titanium clip, uh, which I'm usually not a fan of. I know a lot of people are, but they're usually just not my thing. But however, this one's good. It's it's easy in and out of the pocket. It, um, it's pretty forgiving for a milled clip. It goes in easy, it comes out easy. It's nice, it's probably the best milled clip I've ever used. <clears throat> I do have one concern though, so it's just one screw, right? And normally when they do just one screw, Hold on, my phone is on something. Alright, I'm back. Normally when it's just one screw, there will be like a milled pocket or like a, you know, Strider does a little piece that goes into the hole so there's no side to side. And this doesn't have any side to side and it may very well have something milled in that scale. <laughs> Blow shit off it. I don't know, I haven't taken it off. But I mean, there's no movement at all side to side. It's, it's rock solid, so. <clears throat> and I'm sure they thought of that. Nobody really just puts one screw in there and is like, hope that stays. And with how solid it is, um, 
I'm sure there's something. But again, I don't know. Uh, steel liner lock, um, which honestly is my favorite part about this knife and why I wanted to try this knife. I really like liner locks a lot for a lot of reasons that I won't go into, but and it's good. Um, so tie scales, steel liner lock, lockup is good. It's rock solid, no play in any direction. Um, up, down, left, right, nothing. It's on bearings. Um, it's smooth. I don't know if it'll drop. Yeah, it drops. It's pretty smooth. Um, bearing pivot, titanium, steel iron lock. So obviously the detent is strong enough to do that. You can hear the detent. It's got a strong detent. However, you can still break that detent and roll it out slow, which is nice. I mean, it's really nice, actually. The detent's dialed perfectly. Um, it's strong, but you can still slow roll it. I mean, you can hear that detent. You know a detent's almost like sticky? Because it's so strong? <clears throat> That's how this is. You can almost hear the stick. But you can still slow roll it. It's nice. And like I said, it flicks really well. Copper or bronze or some shit. Um, little pivot ring. It looks nice. I like the little fuller. Um, the grind's nice. Again, that aggressive stone wash. Um, I don't have a problem with CPM 154. I know some people are going to freak out. Oh, it's a $400 knife and it should come with this or it should come with that. I don't, like I said, I don't really get into that. Um, CPM 154 is fine. The little logo here is pretty rad, actually. <clears throat> Sorry. Pillars. And then, like I was saying, it's a, well, what's this you're going to see? It's just an iPhone. It's a steel liner lock, so that has a steel liner inset uh, all the way. It's inset all the way around. It's not just like a little, you know, small piece. That whole side has a liner lock inset into the uh, titanium scale. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's pretty nice. I was pleasantly surprised with it. Um, to be honest, I didn't expect much out of it. I know that may sound shitty, but the guy makes watches, right? <laughs> but, I mean, this is pretty rad. So, so much so that I want <clears throat> I want another one. You know, I want to try the, um, the production one or whatever. <clears throat> I definitely like this custom one or whatever the hell you want to call this. It's, um... It's sweet. It's really nice. I like the thumb disc. <clears throat> it's got good knurling, perfect size. It's almost kind of like a refined uh, Emerson with uh, titanium scales. With a better action and, um, I don't know. Still a liner lock. I really dig that. It's sweet. A lot of people say it looks like an Nkosi. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't really see that, but I guess because it has finger grooves. Uh, other than that, I don't know why the fuck people say that. But um, it's pretty rad. I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised. Great action, great detent, phenomenal lockup. I mean, everything's chamfered. You know, every hard edge has been broken. There's no sharp nothing. The clip is probably literally the best solid clip you know, mill clip I've ever used. It doesn't sit there and rattle around when you tap it out and it's the fuck out of me when I do that. That one's under that. But yet it goes in and out smoothly. Um, the only knock I can give it is <clears throat> the edge is mediocre. It's not that it's not sharp. It's sharp. It's just like the most toothy edge I've ever gotten on a knife from a factory or a maker 
or whatever. It's almost like this edge was put on with like a 50 grit belt or something. Literally, maybe like a 60 grit belt. It is a toothy edge. Don't get me wrong, it cuts <clears throat> and it grabs. It's just the most toothy edge I've ever gotten on a knife. Like, seriously, I think it was put on with like a 60 grit belt. Other than that, it's phenomenal. I mean, I'm very impressed with it, you know. The short period of time I've had it, which is a few hours, I mean, it's uh, it's impressed me. These are 400 bucks, generally speaking, whenever he does a drop on his page. Sometimes they're 450. He does them in D2. He does them in um, some kind of Damascus. He does them in CPM 154. I'm sure he does them in other steels. Different blade shapes, different this, different that. I've seen them with thumb studs as opposed to discs. <coughs> um, the handles are always this handle. You know, they may be anode differently or different collar up here. Um, same handle, you know, CNC'd handles. But um, it's pretty rad. If you get a chance to uh, check one out, do it because it's pretty fucking sweet. I think you can get the Resco instrument ones. Well, you can. You can get the Resco instrument ones on his website for 300 bucks. I think he's running some discount right now. So when you put it in the cart, it's 300 bucks. And essentially, it's the same knife as this, just a little bit different um, blade profile. It's got a more pronounced hump up here in the swedge. But 300 bucks, shit. It's still ground, hand ground. It's just jigged. Who gives a shit? This knife for 300 bucks would be even better. I'm going to try to get one of those and compare the two. Cause I just because I dig this one so much, maybe I'll get that one for work or whatever to beat up. Just keep this one for, I don't know, around the house. That's it. Gooseworks. Um, Gooseworks Arena. Their uh, new folder. Pretty gnarly. It just ships in a, uh, wrapped up in a piece of paper. He gave me a patch with it, a coaster, also from his Resco Instruments company, Resco patch. And then it comes with a lanyard, kind of like, looks kind of like, uh, tied like a CRK lanyard. I took that off immediately. It's not my thing. It was just tied around the rear standoff. But yeah, definitely if you're thinking about it, you're on the fence, check them out. Especially that Resco one for 300 bucks. I think this is a hard knife to beat for $300. In my opinion, if you like liner locks, on bearings, disc, it's gnarly. Check them out, guys. Later.